Bridget Rancho Santa Margarita. You're next, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Bridget. Hi. Hi, Leo. Welcome. I've been listening to you for years, and I think maybe this is the second time that I've actually had to call in. Well, that's what I'm here for. If each and every one of you that listens would call in twice a year, I, I wouldn't be able to answer the phone. So it's probably good that you always call. You have been really funny just this morning. You've been cracking me up. I think somebody's <laughs> giving you extra sugar or something. Yeah. <laughs> something. Yeah, maybe I had a little too much Christmas candy. Uh-huh. Okay, well, Well, what thank you, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate, <laughs> appreciate that. I got a deal on a MacBook from about 2009, 2010, and it's my first Mac, so to speak. I love it. But I've learned that um, I've had iPhones and I've had iPod touches and iPad minis in the past. I'm a big Apple person. But I'm learning now that the apps on an, a, MacBook, a MacBook are um, a whole other world as far as prices compared oh, to yeah. your iPhone. By the way, developers, and, for that reason, aren't crazy about developing for iOS because they can get 5 bucks, not $500. Hmm. Mm. Uh, that was one of the reasons I wanted a Mac so bad, too, is I thought, oh, I know, I'll start making apps. And then I realized after doing some research that it's not as easy as it looks. Oh, you mean make apps? You want to write your own? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. You know, right the, now, the good news about Macintosh is that historically Mac owners have been willing to pay for apps uh, more so than, say, Windows owners or Android owners. And they're willing to pay higher prices for apps. So even though it's a smaller universe of people, the people I know who develop for the Macintosh are very happy because they 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 feel like it's a good ecosystem for them to write apps for. So I wouldn't necessarily ignore it. There may be okay. more volume in iOS because there's many more iPhones out there than there are Macintoshes. But as you've yeah. correctly noted, you you know the cost per unit is higher on the Mac side. What kind of app are you yeah. interested in? Uh, I don't know yet. I'm just thinking, you know, I have some ideas in my back pocket and I have some friends that say, oh, I wish I had an app for this, wish I had an app to do that. So right. it's it's something I'm kind of putting in my yeah. back pocket. But That's called scratching today. your own itch. And it's really the best, <laughs> I think, the best way to <laughs> to write a, an app or best reason to write an app is to to do something you you want it to do because that's, you know best what it should do. And if well, you... And I have friends that it would help them right. too because I, I'm a... Uh, a post-bariatric patient, so ah. you can have an app that would log you know, your water, log your protein, do it all in one. Yeah. Be great. Great. But what I'm trying to do today is I'm looking just for something I can download onto my MacBook that, number one, I'm looking for work, so I need something that will edit a Word document just to fix the resume up. But okay. once that's done and created... I can push that aside so I really don't need to invest in something. You know, I, if, it, if there's a free app for that, yay. Uh, there is. Then I'm looking, okay. And then I'm looking for something that I can perhaps do. I, like I'm looking at pages, but I'm seeing a lot of the reviews are not looking favorably. I like pages. I like it. Don't knock mm -hmm. pages. It's not Word, okay. and that's why the reviews say, oh, it's not Word. I mean, that's pretty much what they say. Oh, it's not Word. Uh, but Word is a power tool, and what we what we know about Word is that people use only about five percent of all the features of Word. Uh, it has, and but the reason it has so many features is there's a different five percent for everybody. So it depends what you want to do. When you say write a resume, Pages is probably the best tool because it's a really great layout editor as well as a word processor. And and how your resume looks is is of course very important. But here's the beauty part: you don't have to buy Pages. Actually, I don't think no. you have to anyway. When you get a new Mac, you get it for free. But if you don't yeah, have, old one. yeah, if you don't have it, iCloud.com has almost all the features of Pages for free, and it's web-based, oh. which means you can use it not just on a Mac, but anywhere, on a Windows machine, on an iPhone, on anything. So you already have an iCloud account when you set up a Macintosh. When you set up an iPhone, you have to create an Apple account. One of the yeah. benefits of that is if you go to iCloud.com and log into your Apple account, you'll see it has a very competent web-based word processor, web-based spreadsheet, web-based uh, slideshow, keynote, plus all the other stuff, calendar, address book. And that stuff's been syncing to your Mac and your iPhone all along, so it's already populated. And by the way, it's not just Apple that does this. Microsoft does it too with Office 365. They have a very credible, it's more like Microsoft Word, so if you've used Word, 
you'd probably want to use the Microsoft solution at live.com. But if you haven't okay. used Word, maybe you've used Pages, you'd like the Apple solution at iCloud.com. And, of course, there's other companies that do free web-based word processors. Zoho is very good, Z-O-H-O.com. And Google even has a solution. It's not ideal for presentation. It's really a kind of more about text processing. But Google Drive, Google Docs, and it's docs.google.com is also very good. So there's a, one of the reasons these exist is they're all in head-to-head -head competition. I would if you if you think you might be interested in pages for a resume, they've even got a starting start out template and everything. Uh, check out iCloud.com. It's very, very good.